I operated the Tornado roller coaster from 1933 to 1959. I was born here in Coney Island, just a few blocks away from the cyclone. By January of 59, we were the new owners of the cyclone and operated it until 1974. The cyclone is a beautiful structure to look at any time of the year. But to see it in the winter, when it is covered with snow, is a scene that is really hard to duplicate. The ride is very, very peaceful and quiet, and it almost looks like it's sleeping. I find my job as the current mechanic of the cyclone both interesting and challenging. We start in late winter with checking the structure and doing track work. Skilled carpenters replace old fatigued wood with new lumber. The metal tracks are checked and replaced if worn or unsound. And we make sure that every inch is strong and safe. In early spring, the cars are brought in via our service tunnel to our heated shops. The cars are dollied in and lowered so that we may totally inspect and repair the undercarriage and locking mechanisms. Each car weighs about 4,000 pounds and possesses a safety wheel system that prevents the coaster from leaving the track. The next major step is the long and tedious job of inspecting the chain and replacing worn pins with new ones. This chain maintenance is very important since it is the only electrical driven part of the ride. From the top of the first hill, it's gravity and momentum all the way back to the platform. The braking systems, which are original equipment, are checked, adjusted and lubricated. After the major maintenance steps are completed, we get the ride into shape for opening day. This year is very special, being the 50th year of operation. Many hours are spent getting the cyclone ready for this landmark year. It was handled by some, some people who knew the roller coaster business and had a deep interest in the operation and the maintenance of the coaster. The ride was improved I guarantee you, year by year to what it is today. It wasn't built in one year. Actually, that coaster was built in 50 years. The season opens in early spring, and it's really good to see those smiling faces again. Some even come early to be the first riders of the year. The press covers the event, and you can feel the excitement in the air.
Twister Top Coaster, designed by Vernon Keenan and built by Harry C. Baker. There's more than just a couple of drops. You keep on dropping and spinning at different angles all the time. Mike Bodley, who in 1974 broke the world's record on the Cyclone, often stops by for a mere 25 rides. Ever since breaking the world record on the Cyclone Roller Coaster for 1,001 consecutive runs, I've had a meaningful, permanent relationship with the Cyclone. A gifted artist, uh, Charles Early, painted a large mural. From an artist's point of view, I feel that the cyclone is visually stimulating because of the types of forms that it has, as well as the type of movement, the architectural qualities, the harmonious aspects of it. In August, a determined young man from Staten Island, Richard Rodriguez, rode the cyclone four days straight to set a new world's record. The element of fear is an amazing thing. It kept me going in a sense. I never got bored with the ride. There was always the fear there. The Guinness Book of World Records allowed me a five minute break for every hour of riding. Your first ride in the cycle is so totally unique. It's one that you never forget. My first ride was when I was 18. That fact, it was my first ride probably on a big roller coaster. Seeing the sun on the horizon gave me a very peaceful feeling. I really enjoyed the beautiful colors. It was a real mental and physical challenge to my own person. I wanted to see if my body and my mind could last for four days. The cyclone is, it's a beautiful ride, but it is a wild beast. It had to be tame in those four days, either one or the other, either it was going to tame me or I was going to tame it. And uh, I did take everything it had, but it took something out of me. Our relationship, the cycle and I, we had a very good respect for one another. The ride is very safe. Oh, I like falling. I think I'm going to fall out. <laughs> because I, I feel like if I went on it, I might get sick on it. Because I've never been on the cycle. One. No, I like my stomach one piece. <laughs> really. Roller coasters today are quite beneficial and they represent a place where people can come and, and can scream off their anxieties, they can jump up and down, cry, laugh, they can do most anything just to get rid of the pent up emotions and the, and the stress that's built up in everyday life. A lot of pressures are released here by a lot of people. Strangers sit side by side, not knowing where they're going and not knowing what to expect. By the time the car has made the first or second dip, they are blood brothers or blood sisters, no matter what color or what creed or what nationality they are.
Oh, I ride the cycle about five or six times every time I come down here. I never, never changed my attitude towards it, man. Every seat has its own character. You gotta ride at least three different places to get the full effect of the ride. Because the front seat's one kind of ride, the back seat's completely different. Well, the, the front is the smoothest part. I like to ride the front. And then the very back is the best part. Because that's the part that's being pulled by the other cars. If you're into speed, you ride the back seat. If you want to use, you ride the front seat. Either way, either way. I never get tired of it. Sensations, unique sensations that are amplified simultaneously to create the ultimate feeling. Fast! I scream! Very exciting off the tension. Nice and high. And on that ride, I do feel hard. We're coming back again after we eat. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. The best ride in the world. It's definitely a rhythmic experience. You let your body go with the rhythm of the... Uh, of the ride, a very erotic um, feeling of exhilaration and anticipation when the, uh, when the hills come. It's like a, a magic carpet ride. 